Hey everybody, and a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we have a 10 bottle whiskey store haul for you folks at home. You know the drill, folks, run the video. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into today's video, I appreciate all the subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider being one because every time someone subscribes, it really does motivate me and kind of makes me more ambition to, ambitious to make more content for you folks at home. Not that I'm already really excited and I enjoy making the content, but it definitely adds towards that. So on today's episode, we have a 10 bottle whiskey store haul. So let's just get straight into some stuff here and kick things off. So on today's episode, I didn't really kill off too many bottles. I killed off a Buffalo Trace cream, uh, which is, I guess, technically a whiskey-based product. It's about 20, it's about 15% alcohol. It contains uh, probably like Buffalo Trace. And I managed to knock one of those out. I've just been drinking down just a lot of the whiskey that I already have without killing anything off. And then I also just finished off a bottle of Knob Creek 9 here as well. So let's delve into the bottles that I managed to pick up or acquire this month. And first up, we're gonna go with two Jack Daniels distillery only releases. So if you're someone who watches a lot of the whiskeys to look for videos, I believe it was October. We put out a video that was whiskeys to look for for the month of October. And I think I included these two in that video. So first up, this is a rye whiskey finishing high toast maple barrels. Secondly, we have uh, a rye whiskey finished in high toast oak barrels. So in that video, I said that I really wanted these whiskies, but the chances of me getting them were very slim because they were only distillery only releases. So what I managed to do, or what I was most fortunate to be able to get these, is that someone who watches the channel reached out and said, hey, I can probably get these because I live quite close by. Uh, do you want me to go and send them over? So that's exactly what happened. I just had to pay with shipping and I was really fortunate to be able to get these. I've tried some of the Tennessee tasters. I know these are the J distillery series, so they're probably a little bit different. But the Tennessee tasters from Jack Daniels aren't too good. So I'm hoping for really great things from these rye whiskies. And toast maple barrels and toast oak barrels just sound absolutely delightful. So I'm super excited to get these balls and try to get into them. So maybe expect a review or maybe expect me talking about these whiskey balls coming up here on the channel in the next month or two. So that was the first two bottles down. Next up, we are going to go with a recent pickup I picked up from Pendarin. This is the Pendarin Single Malt Welsh, Welsh Whiskey from the Icons of Wales series. This is Icon 8 out of 50. A beautiful black tube. It is aluminium or a steel or some sort of uh, metal derivative. It does have really nice, uh, like a raised dragon imprint here. If I take the lid off and I pull out this lovely gold bottle, which has a lot of those same features. This is coming in at 46% alcohol by volume. And even if you're not uh, someone who enjoys single malts or Welsh whiskies out there, bourbon drinkers might appreciate this whiskey because it is finished in ex-bourbon casks. So you know, a lot of the Pandaren stuff is finished in ex-bourbon casks. And what's really nice about Pandaren is I get a really like, nice apple and pear notes just like a lot of stone fruit notes. But then because it's finished in bourbon barrels a lot of the time, you get a lot of those vanilla that cuts through that and then some of that rye spice that also comes through from the bourbon and some oak spice there as well. I paid close to $100 for this. This is a very limited bottle and we don't generally see a lot of these Pandaren Icons of Wales bottles in the US. So anytime I see them, I do generally pick them up. I was trying to not spend too much money on Pandaren or just um, single malt because I have such a bunch behind me. But however, I saw this for the first time ever in the US, so I had to pick it up. So that was Pandaren Icons of Wales. Next up is going to be a single barrel store pick that I managed to acquire here uh, from a local liquor store here in Denver. This is Wyoming Whiskey, and this pick is coming in at 60.2% alcohol. So this is the first pick from Wyoming Whiskey that I was able to get that was above 60% ABV. I have one that's uh, coming in at 59.8 and 58.9. One of those was fantastic. One of those was just okay, but I've heard, heard such great things about this bottle of whiskey. And the store that I got it from down in Denver, they do fantastic picks. So when they say they have an exceptional pick, I always kind of 
appreciate and believe kind of that's kind of similar to the profile that I like to look for and they never seem to let me down so I'm excited to get into this I mean, they're around about $60. So you're paying $60 for a single barrel, 60% uh, private sock barrel from Wyoming whiskey. That's pretty decent value for money. I just hope that this whiskey is great. If it is, I'll let you guys know out there. And then we'll can maybe do, maybe I'll do like a review of just Wyoming whiskey, like, like the brand and the distillery in general. I have the National Parks. I have a couple of their private stocks. I probably need to pick up another one of the small batches because I've already drunk through the one I had. And then maybe we can just go through them and talk a little bit about them. However, this was Wyoming Whiskey private stock. Next up, we have a pair of bottles and that is going to be Weller 107 Antique. So if you're someone from Colorado, or maybe a lot of the US actually, the Weller 107 is a pretty hard bottle of whiskey to find. And that rings true to Colorado here as well. However, and if I can make a little bit of a recommendation for you folks at home is try to make friends with someone who lives in Ohio. So I do have a friend who lives in Ohio. So what I tend to do is, Blanton's is still fairly difficult to find here in Colorado, but it's easier to find than these guys. So I like to trade them with a friend that I have in Ohio for OWAs. I paid about $60, $65 for two bottle, uh, a bottle of Blanton's. So I bought two of those and I traded them for two OWAs. So for me, like I said, I can't get these in Colorado, so I thought that, that was a pretty decent trade off there. Uh, this is one of my favorite with, like whiskeys or to drink on a daily basis. I don't drink whiskey every day, but if, if there's a bottle of whiskey that I can always reach for, these guys are definitely it. Coming in at 50.3% alcohol by volume, like I said, I paid $65 for the Blantons each, so they ended up costing me $130 for two. So not terrible. And like I said, I cannot find it in Denver, so I'm very happy that I was able to pick those up. So next up, as we were talking about Blantons, I was able to pick up another bottle of Blantons this month. Again, I paid about $65 for this. I believe the letter for this bottle I checked earlier on was A. So if someone who's into collecting the stoppers, this is A for the part of A in the Blantons there. Anytime you see a bottle of Blantons for retail, even though that some bottles of Blantons I've had have been great and some others have been just okay, I feel like $65 for what you're getting I think is great value for money. So if you ever see one on MSRP, uh, kind of my advice for you folks out there would definitely be to pick that up. And they make great presents as well. Again, it's that sort of time of the year. A bottle of Blantons just looks absolutely beautiful in a gift or for a gift and on a shelf. So we have three bottles left, two of the same. So let's knock out those two bottles here. And these are technically, I guess, not bourbon, but nevertheless, they are bourbon related. And these are gonna be the 2022 Goose Island Stouts. This year, it's coming in at 14.3% alcohol. Uh, and, and like I said, I know this is a stout, but I do like to collect these guys. I have, um, I have the Goose Island Stouts going back to 2013. So what I intend to do is I intend to keep every whiskey each year or every bottle of stout each year. And then every 10 years I'll open it. So that 2031, 13 one, I intend to open on New Year's Eve, going into New Year's Day this year. And I think I'll actually do a bit of a review on it because it's such a unique bottle and you generally don't keep stouts for 10 years. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how that stands up. And this is finished in whiskey barrels or bourbon barrels. So you do get a lot of that bourbon flavor. And if it's someone who kind of likes drinking stouts, likes drinking bourbons, this is kind of a pretty decent marriage of both of those flavors. And if you haven't tried this before and you're able to get one of these, I would definitely say to definitely try one for the first time. It's very unique in the aspect of it. Yes, it is a stout. So you're gonna get a lot of like those coffee and kind of like, and kind of like darker gray notes, but you're also gonna get the sweetness and the spiciness of bourbon that also kind of comes through there as well. I paid about $13 each for these. I try to buy between two and four a year of the same ones. I don't get any of the special releases because I think they can be a little bit overpriced because when you open a bottle of stout, you kind of have to drink it. You can't keep it and keep it and keep it. So I think anywhere, like if you're paying like a $30 or $40 for the special releases for just a single time one use bottle, that's not for me, but for some people it is, so everybody each to their own. And keep an eye out for that 2013 review. I'll do a one coming up in the next couple of months here. So then lastly, the last bottle I was able to get. So as irony would have it, uh, I've just released a toasted whiskey battle on the channel. 
And I was kind of holding that back a little while because I was trying to find a very specific bottle of whiskey that I kind of dropped in Colorado lately across a couple of liquor stores. So if you remember, or if you haven't watched the video, we had Woodford Reserve, we had Old Forest in 1910, we have Michter's Toasted, and we also had uh, Elijah Craig Toasted. And I wanted to do five balls, but I wasn't able to find this ball, so I went ahead and completed the video, knocked the video out, and then posted it. And then of course, as irony would have, a week later, I picked up this ball. So this ball is gonna be Michter's Sour Mash Toasted. So I have the regular toasted, but I really wanted to get the sour mash toasted. I've been looking for this bottle for so long. This is a highly allocated whiskey bottle. And I was super lucky that I was able to score it. Again, it was part of kind of like a whiskey club where you can only get one allocated bottle every three months. And kind of the list changes a little bit of what you can and can't have and what they have in stock. And I was able to hit them up on the day that they get or update the list. And then this was one of the bottles of whiskeys on that list. And I was able to buy it. I paid $89.99 uh, MSRP. I believe that's right in line with that. But again, very happy and very humble that I was able to get this Mictus. Just came a couple of weeks too late for my toasted barrel. And again, folks, you know, I'd like to share with you the whiskeys that I drink and the whiskeys that I pick up just for you folks at home know what's coming into the Whiskey Cove, what you can maybe expect to see if you're lucky in Colorado and other states, and kind of the MSRP of these products as well. I think it's just a super a fun experience for me to kind of show you what I'm picking up. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like button as well. And also, if you'd like to come over to Facebook and join our Facebook group called Rocky Mountain Whiskey. We have about 500 members who like to share posts and updates about whiskeys and just stories in general. It's just a really fun place and a good community to kind of connect with me and, uh, and other people behind the scenes of the Rocky Mountain Whiskey. So as we always say in this channel, as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time, cheers.